This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1817, The Myth of Multitasking versus the Art of Single Tasking, by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back once again for our second episode today. I'm Greg Audino, your host, and you have found yourself in our weekly bonus episode in which we share a previously aired episode from another show in our network, one that we think you'll enjoy and take something from. Now, today's comes from Optimal Living Daily, which is the same format as ORD, but all about different topics within personal development, rather than relationships specifically. So without further ado, here is OLD narrator Justin with the post and his commentary as we optimize your life. The Myth of Multitasking versus the Art of Singletasking by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. In my 20s, I took pride in my multitasking abilities. I think I may have even included it as a strength on my CV. Bent on achieving as much as possible every day, this was the only way I could accomplish my epic to-do lists. But it wasn't until I turned 30 and had our first daughter that I really began to flourish as a multitasker extraordinaire. How else are you supposed to survive those first few months, let alone the years to follow? I knew how to fold a load of washing while stirring dinner on the stove, while talking on the phone, while entertaining my six-month-old. And it felt good. Except, the good feelings never lasted. They soon made way for an exhaustion that was all-consuming. It turns out our bodies and brains aren't really wired for that many things all at once. The science and history of multitasking. In fact, operating in this manner actually uses up the oxygenated glucose in the brain the fuel we need for concentrating on a task. So then we find ourselves turning to food and coffee to make up for what we've used with our multitasking. The term multitasking first appeared in 1965 and was used to describe IBM's technology and computers' ability to multitask. Links to human behavior were made and voila, the term became synonymous with the fast pace of life that many people live. And the myth that multitasking allows someone to do more was born. Nowadays, multitasking is more likely to be recognized for what it is, one of the biggest productivity killers. Studies have shown that it takes an average of 23 minutes to get back on focus on a task after switching to something else. This is particularly evident when we are multitasking with something cognitively demanding. Who has an extra 23 minutes, times that by how many times you switch, to spare every day? What multitasking really is, The terminology has also changed. It turns out that most of the time what we are actually doing when we multitask is task switching. Think of my example earlier. Yes, I could talk on the phone and stir the food in the pot, but I couldn't also be folding the washing. That would literally require another set of arms. So what I described is instead task switching. I'd stir the pot, fold a couple of times, stir the pot, talk to the baby, fold some more. The biggest problem I eventually had and still do with multitasking was what it did to my mental health. My anxiety levels skyrocketed when I was constantly multitasking or task switching. My brain literally could not keep up with the to-do list. I ended days like this feeling fraught, on edge, and unsatisfied. Enter single tasking. And I'll warn you now, it's a hard act to follow, but I think if you give it a try, you'll find it's a game changer. You might be asking, how the heck do you single task? After all, for lots of us, it doesn't come automatically anymore. There are lots of tips for something that seems, well, self-explanatory. If you have the well-worn habit of task switching, then you might find you need lots of practice to try and swap this out for single tasking. How to start practicing single tasking. Single tasking is an art. Here are some ideas to get you started. Number one, focus on one thing. Try and notice the task you are currently doing and fully engage with it. For example, if it's folding the washing, focus on just that. Focus on that one thing and do it well. Number two, reduce distractions. When you are on your phone, laptop, or whatever device of your choice, keep one tab open at a time. I know this one's pretty shocking and sometimes if you are working, you need more than one. But how often do you really need Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram open at the same time? I've just installed a Chrome app called Waste No Time, which blocks Facebook for me after a certain period of time. Number three, 
If you make to-do lists like me, try completing each task fully before moving on to the next one. Lots of days I get to the end of my day not being able to cross anything off. Each task is half done. I've either been interrupted and then decided to move on to the next thing or found the chosen task too difficult and procrastinated by moving down the list. How ridiculously unsatisfying. Here's the kicker. If you have kids, single tasking might be near on impossible. These tiny little humans are experts at interrupting us and basically demanding we task switch to whatever the heck they want us to do. So you simply won't get to do it every time. But practice makes perfect. And one day you'll find yourself in a season where mindful single tasking can happen more often. Charles Dickens had some great insight on this. Maybe this is how he got some of his great works like Oliver Twist completed. He did each single thing as if he did nothing else. Enjoy your week and remember to give single tasking a go today. You just listened to the post titled The Myth of Multitasking Versus The Art of Single Tasking by Emma Scheib of simpleslowlovely.com. The new 2023 Ford Escape is the perfect getaway car. Featuring an available 13.1-inch center stack screen, 360-degree camera, and Bang & Olufsen sound system and spatial flexibility for extra legroom. The new 2023 Ford Escape. Learn more at Ford.com. Some models, trims, and features may not be available or may be subject to change. At FedEx Office, we know running a business is a marathon. But sometimes, every task feels like a sprint. Design the product catalog, pick up the new boxes, print the business cards, notarize the lease, put out 20 more yard signs. It's a lot. Luckily for you, FedEx Office is here to help turn your ideas into reality so you can stop running yourself in circles and start concentrating on the important things, like deciding what's for lunch. Visit your nearest location or office.fedex.com to get started. FedEx Office. One big misconception about productivity is that it's synonymous with multitasking. As a drummer, I used to pride myself on being a multitasker. One hand is doing one thing, the other is doing something else, and both feet are doing completely different things from the hands and each other, all while doing something else like reading music. Now, is that multitasking? Could be seen that way, but I don't think it is actually. It's like juggling. It's one thing, but involves hand-eye coordination of several parts of the body. So the distinction, I think, is that My mind is on one thing when I'm drumming or playing guitar, at least hopefully it is. Yeah, the left hand and right hand might be doing different things, but it's for the same reason. Not like with multitasking where it's unrelated reasons and that's where the synergy is gone and you're really only giving half or less of your attention to each. You're mentally trying to switch back and forth and don't quite give each your full attention. Again, you could say that it's true with drumming, but that's the end goal of drumming. You might take your focus off your foot and it'll keep going, and you'll focus on something special with the right hand, but that's all part of a plan to make them all work together. That's not the case with multitasking. It is not harmonious, just a chaotic mess. They don't feed off of each other. Texting isn't helping your driving, and vice versa. They're hindering each other. And that's where we get into trouble. So I do encourage all of us to not glamorize or be proud of our multitasking abilities. Instead, we should really champion focus and attention. So something to think about today. Thank you to Emma for the reminder. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the Wednesday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.